Hey YouTube. I've been working a lot on the CAN bus relay uh, with a Twitter friend, uh, at Matthew Driver on Twitter. Um, huge help with helping me get some dual axis acceleration displays. This is going to be just a quick short drive uh, for calibration of some of these sensors. Um, and just to kind of see if I can uh, get everything synced up. Boy, it's really slow turn here, but it, uh, it, it's going for it. And uh, see if it can see some of the accelerations and they all line up and perhaps to, to start to see if this is going to be the beginning of being able to see phantom braking. All right, here it's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and disengage. See if that disengagement count works. I've got it uh, on the display, hopefully. It's kind of stuck there on the railroad track sign. And I am proceeding, and here's a little bit of a launch. All right. It's off the accelerator. I'm going to go ahead and re-engage. And let's see if this quick route uh, gives us a little bit of insight into some of these accelerations. I'm going to go ahead and do a couple disengagements for the disengagement counter. I'm going to use my brake. And there's a brake disengage. With a little bit of a tap. And there's a normal deceleration using regen for this stoplight. I appreciate the feedback I've gotten over Twitter and on Reddit even on some of the ways of displaying this data a little bit better. We ended up settling on G's instead of meters per second squared because the safety score uses G conversions. The raw can data though spits out meters per second squared. Um, a little bit of accelerate deceleration there using regen um, for this stoplight. There's a flashing yellow, unprotected left. It's done this before. Let's see if it'll do it. All right, it's clear and it's proceeding. It used to get stuck on this flashing yellow. All right, we're gonna go over these railroad tracks at full speed. Okay, way faster than I'm comfortable doing, but I let it do it just for the acceleration graph there. And here we got a stop sign. It's going to need to creep. I cannot see yet. I don't have my 360 camera on right now. Okay, it's wide open. It can go in the road, though. I'm in the road, and it's deciding. Yeah, that's a little bit disappointing there again. But this is the same build I've already tested. Speed bump mapped. Very late. Very late identification on the screen. And here we are swerving in front of cars again. So I'm not going to let this go very far. Look, look where it stopped. That, that's weird. Okay. Disengagement via the steering wheel there. And I'm gonna let that car pass and re-engage. All right, I'm engaged now. Very slow, committing in the road. It's not right here. All right, another oncoming car on this unmarked road. Stopped, and I had to get over. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's hogging the road. Hogging the road. Speed bump. Okay, that was good. And. And it stopped again. Uh, okay. It stopped to let him go over. Boy, but he had to go. I, and there's road to the right of me that I should have scooted over. I don't know if you can see that or not. But, yeah. Proceeding here through this dual intersection. Wide open. Just very hesitant to commit. Whoa, very jerky there, uh, swerving on the road. And I got another speed bump coming up. It's not identified, it's not identified. And there, it just flew over it. Okay. Well, that's what it did. Okay, and I'm disengaging via the stalk here. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the return.
re-engaging. So I think the lighting, yeah, there's some stuff in the road. I went around there. Ugh. I don't know if you can see those bumps on the accelerometer I'm uh, displaying, but boy, you know, when it goes over those speed bumps too fast, it, you know, over 20 for sure, it's just very uncomfortable. In the middle of the road, just completely hogging the road here. Not happy with that. Nobody's coming, so I'm just going to kind of let it ride for a second, but eh, this car is coming. I'm just going to go ahead and disengage. This is more of a, a calibration test than it is a uh, demonstration of features here. All right, and there it slowed down to 17. That was about right. Uh, so when the sun was shining on that speed bump, it looked like you could see it. When that speed bump is in the shadows, it's, it's not doing so well. All right, there is a woman here that she is waiting. I'm gonna go ahead and disengage and proceed. And won't engage. Maybe thinks I'm too close to the road. Yeah. All right, I'm going over this speed bump at my own speed. There's 13, 10, 11. Engaging for the railroad tracks up here. See if we can uh, get a little sense of the speed and bump it uses here. Now it's definitely got to slow down for the intersection, but okay. Hey, well, it's stopping on the railroad tracks. Uh, I'm pressing the accelerator. You probably see that on the indicator. Very aggressive braking there. All right, I'm tapping the accelerator to initiate that turn, but it stayed engaged, but that is an intervention. Well, I think there was definitely enough acceleration on that drive to hopefully use this uh, G meter uh, to indicate, you know, kind of what I'm feeling. Uh, the speed, you know, up to this point was really all you can see was acceleration, deceleration. There have been some people that have asked me to incorporate a jerk meter. Um, you know, jerk obviously is a derivative of acceleration. Uh, I just need to divide by the, the time scale again, but I'm not exactly sure yet how to take the can data I get and, and apply a time factor because the actual can uh, data does not have a timestamp on it. It's a real-time stream. I could probably do it in real time on the Raspberry Pi, um, but in order to get an accurate jerk, uh, I got to have an accurate timestamp of the message. So anyway, I'll, I'll think about that, but for the time being, just look at the rate of change of the acceleration graph as your indication of jerk. Uh, but it's a great thought because jerk is definitely what you feel. Um, since the rate of change and you know a couple of those times I was groaning was really because of the jerk a um, little unprotected left here we'll give it a second and uh, I'll let it do its own thing it's definitely gonna have to find a gap here it's kind of this sporadic I'm afraid it might go for this tight one here it's a little and the light just turned yellow so it should wait good it did wait all right, well, while I'm stopping this light, I think I'm just going to wrap up the video here. Uh, you might get to see this. but So let me know what you think. You know, does this acceleration work? Does the, does the placement of the CAN data uh, at the top of the screen work better? Um, does the uh, font show up? I changed font colors a little bit. Uh, and, you know, granted, I can go dig for more parameters that are more relevant. Those of you that might be familiar with the actual CAN bus data, if you know some parameters I'm not using, by all means, uh, let me know. Uh, shoot me a DM on Twitter uh, at Chazman or if you leave a comment here in the YouTube comments and it doesn't get buried too deep I, I might see it in any case appreciate your feedback here's the uh, protected left turn and we'll uh, wrap up with this one have a great day everybody